Hello you plonkers and welcome back to another video today on the Druzy Channel 9 things we learnt round 10. But before we get into it, make sure you like the video to support the Druzy algorithm if you enjoy my videos. And make sure you subscribe because still a large contingent of the people that watch my videos still aren't subscribed. Capiche, beautiful. Let's get in nice and quick because we like quick content. It's good. Number one. The biggest win Colton have had in Yonks. Colton's wins this year have been exciting but you know some of them haven't been to like a proper good side the one against port was close but they gave away a big lead the one against richmond was big because they hadn't beaten richmond in a long time but still early on in the year didn't have much context this one friday night footy fourth versus fifth they come out in that second quarter and absolutely dominated sydney and it was the knockout blow that second quarter in particular with five first half goals from big charlie kerno to hold on Battle out four quarters against a very good side in the Sydney Swans. It was a massive statement win for Carlton. I think it's the biggest win that they've had in a long time. Carlton putting their name and claim in the drain. Something else that rhymes. Next thing, number two. Geelong win every second week. Since round four, the Cats have gone win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. I think that adds up to round 10 if you go back from round four. But anyway, round three and four was the last time they had consecutive wins. And they just it was just a classic win against Port Adelaide. I mean, I'm not going to read into it too much. They've got Adelaide next week, two Adelaide sides, visiting the Cattery. And they just get to stay home on their farms and have fires and go surfing or whatever they want to do. Anyway, the Cats win every second week. That's all I learned. Move on. Number three, the Doggies are starting to bark. Woof. They were very impressive last week against the Pies, I thought, the Dogs, and you started to think, all right, they could be back now, and they played Gold Coast in Ballarat on Saturday. Gold Coast are playing very good football at the moment, and the Dogs scored bloody, I think, about 16 goals, 15 goals. They played a four-quarter effort, is the point I'm trying to make, and it's looking like they're playing the football that they were playing in parts last year. Trelaw is humming. Played his 200th game. I'm loving watching him play at the moment. The Bont put on a clinic. Bailey Smith, as he always does, had a very good game. And Norton's kicking goals. It was just like, yeah, all right. The doggies are back. They're starting to bark again. Woof. I think those early season yips are done. I reckon the dogs are here now. They've figured out whatever they had to do. And now they're ready to fight once again. Number four. Opposite ends of the spectrum. As soon as North knew that they couldn't beat Nam on Saturday, they just gave up. I think the D's got out to about a three or four goal lead and that was it. North's heads dropped and they just gave up. They allowed the loss to continue to happen, which a bad side does. Now you look at the other end of the spectrum, Clayton Oliver had an absolute feast, 45 touches, absolutely unbelievable. And once they knew that they had their, their prey killed or on the back foot, the D's just put their foot down on the neck and stormed home to a, to a big win in the end, which it wasn't looking like it was going to be for parts, but they got over just the, the breaking point, the critical threshold, and then they just put their foot on the accelerator and stormed home to victory, which is what a very good side doing good things does compared to a side that's doing very poorly in a dark period of their history in North Melbourne. They just gave up as soon as they knew the game was not there to be won. And before we get into the next thing I learned from round number 10, I want to thank today's sponsors at Manscaped who provide the world's best grooming products for men below the belt grooming. I know it's getting cold, lads, but that's no reason to not shave your balls. If you're looking for some good products to help you groom below the belt, look no further than the Lawnmower 4.0 with an LED light to show where you're going, with a ceramic blade to ensure that you get no nicks or cuts, as well as liquid formulations to get rid of that post-shave itch that you get sometimes, as well as a ball deodorant that makes your balls smell nice. Just make it look nice down there, lads. You wouldn't go out to a, to a nice bar when you're trying to pull with a, with a messy mop on your head, would you? So don't treat below the belt any differently. Head over to manscaped.com and use code DRUZY20, all caps, no spaces at checkout, which will give you free worldwide shipping and 20% off your order. That's DRUZY20. Use the code, use the link in the description, and that will give you a good product. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Let's get on with the next thing that I learned. Number five, you must kick straight to win games of football. Adelaide had more scoring shots in this game, and when you have these scoring shots that are easy and you miss them, you sort of think, oh, I'll just kick the next one. And then the momentum goes against you and you don't have as many opportunities as you thought you once would get. 
St Kilda, they kicked goals at critical times in this game when they needed to, particularly in that last quarter with Membry and King. And Adelaide, if you don't kick straight, you're just not going to win games of football. It's as simple as that. If you're not converting easy opportunities, what's the point of all the hard work that you put in? You know what I'm saying? Basic fundamentals of football, fam. Taught to you by Druzy. Kick ball straight, win game football. Number six. Shy Bolton is in all Australian form. Shy Bolton is one of the most entertaining players to watch when he is on. And this year, he has been on just about every single week. I think that was the main criticism that people had of Shy Bolton in the past. He'd show glimpses of it in parts of games or he'd pop up in a game and play very well. And then the next week, he might not show up. But this season, he's starting to mature. He's found himself as a player. He knows what he has to do to get the best out of himself every single week. Kick two goals, put on a show on Dreamtime again, as he did last year. Two goals. I think he had 16 disposals. And if the All-Australian squad was to be selected tomorrow, I reckon Shy Bolton would be in there. So far, the first two and a bit months of the season, he has looked elite. Number seven, GWS let off the chain. It happens a lot in sports. When a team fires their coach, the next week they'll come out and they'll be free. It's like the Berlin Wall falling down, mate. And GWS, they were let off the chain. They were banging on the gates. Let me out, Leon. Let me out. And he was just playing with the keys on the other side. And then as soon as the dogs got him and let the the, the bloke open the gate with the keys, the boys come out. I don't know where I'm going with this, but basically they were free to play. I think the message from the coach at GWS, I think it's McVeigh, that he would have just said, go play, be free, play to your strengths. Real basic instructions. But they did. They had a goal-scoring fest. 13 different goal scorers. They wouldn't have had strict roles. They would have just been free to go and play the way that they want to do. And there's obviously a lot of talent on this GWS list. And they played magnificently today against West Coast, which is a quite a weak side. But it is what it is. A 52-point win after Leon goes. They are free to breathe at once. And the chain is off the foot. Number eight. If you can't stop them scoring... Score more. I spoke last week about how Hawthorne concede too much. And against the Lions, they conceded 112 points. And if you're playing the Lions, you bloody expect to lose. One, you expect to lose. Two, if you're told that they score 112 points against you, you'd bloody definitely expect to lose. But the Hawks come out and bloody won it. How have they gone and done that? They're the most bipolar team in football at the moment, the Hawks. But they, they were just efficient inside 50. They scored... More than 50% of the times that they entered the inside 50 region. And when you got guys like Mitch Lewis, Dylan Moore, Luke Bruce, Chad Wingard in there, you're going to kick snags. They have a potent forward line. I really rate Hawthorne. I'm not looking forward to playing them in a few weeks' time. Massive, massive win from the Hawks down in Tassie to nab four points from the jaws of the Lions. It's like a lion is like walking along with a with a chicken in its mouth or something, and the hawk come and took it with its claws from out of its mouth. Four points on mine, Brisbane. Piss off back to Queensland. And number nine. The ah, rats! For every other game, I have a little a couple dot points to talk about. But for this game, Dockers versus Collingwood, I do not. Uh, last week, I said, was this a blip on the radar or a genuine problem? And you best believe it could be a genuine problem problem. We've seen this exact same game happen three times now. St. Kilda, Gold Coast, and now Collingwood. So when we don't move the ball fast, when the defense has time to set, we cannot create goal scoring opportunities. Factor that in with the wet conditions, which we are absolutely terrible at playing in. We kicked, what, five or six goals today? I think we've kicked 10 goals in the last two weeks, which is Terrible. But yeah, as I was saying, when you don't move the ball fast and you're coming up against defenders like Moore, Howe, Quainer, just great one-on-one defenders, as soon as they locate, you're not going to have Matt Tavener beaten Moore in a one-on-one. You're definitely not going to have Bailey Banfield beating Jeremy Howe in a one-on-one. And Isaac Quainer, he's having a great season as well. The Pies were on today. All credit to them. They're a great side. I've known that all season. I rate them very highly. And they come off a big loss against the Bulldogs and responded. We played in the exact same conditions as we did against Gold Coast last week, and there was no change. Maybe in the contest, we were a little bit harder, but the Pies just did what they want today, and it wasn't good to watch. It was the toughest game of the season. As a Dockers fan, when Ginevan kicked that goal when he ran into the goal square, I just I couldn't watch. I literally walked off and had to compose myself because I was having a shocker of a time. And the Dockers now have 
Melbourne and Brisbane and Hawthorne. We've lost two in a row. We've got Melbourne, Brisbane, Hawthorne. So that's going to wrap up nine things that we learned from round 10. But before you go, make sure you drop a like because it helps the algorithm and the Druzy channel very much. If you enjoyed it, make sure you comment down below what you learned from this round. I didn't get to watch every game of football intently, so make sure you let me know what I have missed in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you very soon for whatever video I put out. Take care, you plonkers.